The pages panel also allows you to create custom page sizes. And so there's really two ways to change the size of a page in your project. You can go to the file menu and choose document setup. And you can say, oh gosh, I made my project eight and a half by 11, but it was really supposed to be eight by 10. And then you change every page in your project to be the new page size. When you do that, everything in our case will be too big because I went from eight and a half to a smaller size, which would be eight inches. And so the page isn't as wide as it used to be. But there are some times where you want to have multiple page sizes. So I'm going to create a new document for this next example. Maybe you're designing a series of postcards and you want them all to be in the same document and you want them to all be um, three or four pages within the same project. So what you could do is you could create the first postcard, let's say it's six inches by nine inches. I'm going to turn facing pages off and just create a one page document. And so this could be our first design, maybe I'm making a sticker or a postcard, whatever I happen to be making. If I'm going to create a couple different versions, maybe they're different sizes, you could use the edit page size button to change the size of the page. And so the first page is six by nine, but if you select the second page, you can hit the edit page size button and you can choose a new page size. So I could choose business card size. And if we scroll down, you'll see that now I have a page that's the size of a business card. If the size that you need is not on there, so let's do one for page three, you can always hit the edit page size button, scroll to the bottom and then choose a custom page size. And so maybe I want to make this be four and a quarter by six and a quarter. I like to name my custom page size the size that my, my page is going to be, just so there's no confusion. So this will be 4.25 inches by 6.25 inches. If you select add, it will add it to the list of custom sizes. You can see now it's on my list. Um, I'm going to select it and then select OK. And see how it automatically changed the size of my page. I will always double check that it worked. And you can do that by selecting page three, hitting the edit page size option. And wherever the check mark is, is the size of the page that you're working on. I do want to caution you that you should not use custom page sizes in facing pages documents where you're creating a booklet unless you're doing it for a very specific reason. It can very easily break your document. Another option are, is page shuffling. So I'm going to go back to that first eight page document that we're working on and I'm going to change the color of this box. So we have two different color rectangles. On our pages panel you can see that I have a blue, a cyan rectangle, and a magenta rectangle. If I click page 9, which is my magenta rectangle, and I drag it, you can see a little vertical line appears, and I drop it. I'm going to drop it to the left of page 1. It will become page 1. Page 1 will shuffle to become page 2. The blue page 2 will move over to become page 3. And all the pages will shuffle down in line so that I still have, let me get rid of a couple pages here, an 8-page document. If I turn page shuffling off, which I can do via the option flyout menu. I'm just going to go ahead and turn the document uh, pages to shuffle. Um, I'm going to turn it off. It doesn't matter which one you choose, but it's easier for this example if you choose allow all document pages to shuffle, and I'm going to turn it off, so the check mark is going to disappear. See, it's allowing all document pages to shuffle, but because there's no check mark, none of the pages are going to shuffle, meaning if I was to drag page three and put it to the left of page one, it did not shuffle, it just left a hole where that page was. This allows you to create fold out panels if you're designing for that. And so let's create a couple new pages. So I have an eight page document, but I want a fold out panel on the first page so that there's another panel that folds out. If I click and drag with document shuffling turned off, if you get close enough to a page, you'll see a bracket appear and you can attach this to the side of the page. And so now page one, if we scroll to the top, page one is the front cover of our book, but folding out from the front page will be an extra panel. We don't really cover this a lot in the regular InDesign class, but we will in the advanced InDesign. But every time you add one page to a document, you have to add a second page because every sheet of paper has a front and a back. And so if I have a fold out panel on page one, I also have a fold out panel on what used to be page two which is now page three because I added page two there. 
And so in order to have a fold-out panel on the front cover, the front cover has to have a fold-out panel, but the inside of the front cover also has to have a fold-out panel. This gets really complicated and confusing, and so for now, just don't allow document pages to shuffle, and don't use fold-out panels unless you know what you're doing. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is the ability to move pages within your artboard or your workspace. And so if I look at this spread here, if I was designing something, maybe there is some sort of design that is supposed to be exactly the same on the left hand side of the page. Let's give this a fill color. And it should be exactly the same on the right hand side of the page. But for whatever reason, I can't create it once and just copy and paste it. Maybe I'm typing words or I'm designing something where the lines are supposed to line up but they are not exactly the same. If you want to make sure that there's consistency across the spread um, but not exactly in the location, like I want this blue box everywhere that something hits the spine on this blue box, I want it to also hit in this blue box here if that makes sense. You can use the page button which is the third uh, tool down on your tools panel and you can activate your page and then you can click it and drag it to move it. So I could move this spread until until my two boxes line up and then I could take the shape that I was working on and I can line it up in my document so that the pages line up for whatever purpose, visually, uh, visual purpose that I'm shooting for. And then when you go to print this, it will not print with one page, you know, eight inches taller than the other. It'll print them side by side.